thought you said four o'clock. Give him a chance, Ollie. It's only that now. Sorry I'm late. You're not. He is. You're late. Look, all I wanted to say was, I'm really sorry for winding you up earlier on. It was a pretty dumb thing to do, I know, so... Sorry. What's wrong with you, anyway? I've got this thing called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Basically, the muscle in my heart's much thicker than it should be. Oh, a bit like the muscle in your head, eh? Yeah, I suppose so. It's all a bit complicated, really, but it's a hereditary thing. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, I had a few funny turns when I was younger, but nothing for ages, really. Look, I don't want to sound like it's a big deal or anything, but it could just, you know, go, like, stop at any time. What? So you could just, like... Drop dead any minute. Oh, nice one, Donna. Really tactful, that. Nah, I'm fine. Chucky's just not letting it get to you. I'm not sure Donny will be too bothered either way, to be honest. Do I look like I'd be worried? Pull a stunt like that again and I'll do the other one for you. The thing is, though, how do we prove it? Assuming it's true. Of course it is. I hardly know them, but you can see by the way he is around her. Like a big silly puppy. So where were we? How to demonstrate so that Dawn can see it's obvious that Terry's thing for Louise is still sort of bubbling under the surface. It's, it's not right. I just can't do it. You're protecting your daughter. Keep that in mind. This is our child's future we're talking about. Look, I hate to come between you two with my and opinion. Viv, love, we can hardly just ignore it, can we? I accept that, Bob. Love. But I just think you'll go too far. Not that my feelings count for anything lately. Just stuff you picked up here and there, you say? I've always had an eye for a good investment. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All small issue, limited editions. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> yeah. There's one or two bits here, I must admit, I've only read about. Well, I can always get someone else if you're not interested. We'd be talking about a lot of money if you really wanted to sell us a job lot. Now, I'm not a big business, as you know. Some make me an offer. Well... I suppose I could run to, um, 25, if you're willing to wait a week. <laughs> Tommy, darling, we both know there's over 100 grand's worth of gear sitting there. Especially when you get on the phone to the Yanks and the Japanese, <laughs> eh? Don't take me for an idiot. You give me 60 and we'll both be all right. Tomorrow, price goes back up. You're talking of monopoly money. There's a recession on, or there soon will be. All right. I go to 30. How's that? Listen, I want to get this sorted, and I ain't got time to mess about. Neither have I. So you ever think. You got my number? You both seem so set against Terry. There's a damn sight worse out there she could be shacking up with. <gasps> Might I suggest you mind your own business? Whoa, not in what is Viv's own house, after all. Come on, Jean, civilise, we said, remember? Oh, civilise, that way you both have to live in separate countries. You're out of order having a go at me. At least I'm trying to help. Can anyone join in? I'd rather do that than listen to it. Look, I need to get to work. Let's just, let's just try and keep things calm, all right? Look, I might have a chat with Louise. Just, just try and see what she thinks. I yeah? think you might regret it. I hope you're more civil with her than you just were with me. Oh. Can you smell this in Otten? How did you go on? Negative. Nothing to get worked up about. Yeah, not now there isn't. Have you told my dad? Earlier on this afternoon. He'll be all right. Yeah, what about the job? Oh, it's not rocket science, but yeah, fine. Everything's under control. Mum, this is typical of you. You just had tests for breast cancer. You started a new job and you act like it's nothing. And what's to be gained from everybody else worrying? Well, you could at least give us the choice once in a while. You take too much on. How many times have I told you? And one day I'll take notice. Now, are you going to stop for your tea or what? Yeah, as long as it's chips. wonder why people don't just come here first. I'd like to tell you I've seen the light, Edna, but... It's just more like I've seen these radiators. You'd be surprised what can happen once you walk through that door. It's all right for me. 
Oh, it's never too late in here. Shame you needed so much drink before you got this far, though. Look at me, Edna. I'm young enough. I'm fit enough. I ain't got no job. I haven't got a roof over me yet. You can drink and all. Work will come soon enough. Let me know if he's got any ideas for me. I may as well tell you now. I've had an invite off Terry for the wedding. Look, you know I'm against it, but that doesn't mean that you should offend anybody. Now, if you want to accept, you go. It's you I'm trying not to offend. I know, thanks. Thanks. Don't tell me the wedding. You know what worries me? It's, it's not so much the age difference or the rushing into it. You know, I'm sure he's still got a thing going for you. You can see he worships Dawn. Well, he thinks he does, but what if she's just a way to get over something else, if you see what I mean? No, Bob, I mean, that's just too easy to assume. Come on, you know I'm right. Everybody else can see it a mile off. You should know more than anybody. I suppose you might have a point. I've just been in the church. Oh, you should know there's more chance of finding me in here. Come on, what's up? Don't be flippant. There is a man down there needs work. And you could help him if you wanted. Mike, in church, you're joking. What, are they burying him? You're supposed to be his friend. And you'd leave him by the side of the road like everybody else. Eh? The Good Samaritan? I assume you've heard the story. Look, all I'm saying is just let him sort himself out. He always does. Well, thank you for the advice. It's a good thing we're not all the same. Can I help you? Now, don't be like that, Vivian. If you and I can't be friends, then I'm going to have to look around these sad northerners and you wouldn't wish that on me, would you? Why not? I am the aggrieved party, after all. Yes, and I am trying to apologise. Evening. Uh, you've run out of semi skim. Shall I just get one out of the fridge? So what's the verdict? Well, there's no harm in being magnanimous, is there? Really? I didn't come here to be patronised. I don't believe we've met. No. Steph, this is Jean. Uh, the original Mrs Hope. Nice to meet you. Ah, oh, you're the lady that lives in Spain, aren't you? Only thing wrong with it? It's not far enough away. <laughs> oh, well, at least we agree on something. I'm thinking of buying a property abroad. Um, I wouldn't mind picking your brains when you've got five minutes. Not a problem. Now, if you like, we can nip upstairs. You don't mind, do you, Viv? No. Oh, great. Yeah, it's a little place in the door doing. Part from our wall a minute. Cheeky cow. I hope you put him straight, our alley. I'll give him a right blasting when I see him, especially doing it in front of Elaine. I can see where it comes from. It's like constantly having to prove you're not scared. Mm, when you are, big time. I'm not sure he is. Either way, it's about being responsible towards other people's worries as well. He's never really got that part. Your dad went white when he found out. Mm. You've done right bringing him out here, though. It's got to be better than not than this. Wouldn't do you any harm living out here, either. Can you see me persuading Siobhan to come out here? Eh? There's no work for a start. Where's she going to get a weekly five aside? Oh, there's plenty of hills to walk up and down. Well, she likes kicking people, though. <laughs> Just while we're quiet, you know what we were saying before about Terry and our dawn? Mm, go on. Well, you know that I'm only doing this to save her from a load of unnecessary bother, don't you? Well, I think that as the father of the bride, you probably have every right to be concerned. Exactly. And I know with everything that went on after Ray passed on, like, that you and Terry, you, you did kind of, you did kind of develop a, a bond. You're asking, did I sleep with him? I'm like, no, 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 did I say that? No, no, well, I was just... Well, what is it? Well, I was just thinking, if there had been, you know, any, any prior relations, as it were... You mean sex? Uh, well, yeah, that as well, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, well, there wasn't. So don't try using that as a wedge to split them apart, because it never happened. I'm not going to pretend it did, either. 
Not for you or your daughter, who seems to know exactly what she wants, by the way. Or for anyone else, for that matter. So just forget it. Right, yeah, I will. Forget it, yeah? Don't love. What can I get you? Uh, lemonade, please. did everything very understated. Tasteful, you know. <laughs> you would have gone over the top, but you've got to keep a check on him, ain't you? Well, I don't think Terry's the flamboyant type, to be honest, and he's paying for everything, so I can't exactly start dictating, can I? He knows it's the bride's day, love. You'll not find Terry skimping when it comes to looking after you. Oh, no. It'll be perfect. I know mine was. Well, the second one was, not the first. Oh, it don't matter. <laughs> it's just not right. In this day and age, there is no excuse for somebody to be sleeping rough in a place like this. But Mac, he's just looking for sympathy. If he didn't poison everything he went near, it might be a different story. Well, from what I hear, it's hardly surprising he's got no mates. And then there was all that funny business with Louise. I mean, it stands to reason that it were him. We don't know that, so we mustn't judge. Mac can take care of himself, Ed. And we call ourselves Christians. I don't. Anyway, why don't you take him in if you're all that mithered? That'd hardly be appropriate. An elderly lady living alone, now would it? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what Bob sees in her, honestly. Men are easily confused, sweetheart. <laughs> More so as they get older. She can't keep her oar out of this damn wedding business, I know that. She just don't like being left out, that's all. Oh, either way, you don't come between two parents and their child. At least you voted to her, though. <laughs> You've got to give him that. Yeah, for how long? I've studied form where Bob's concerned. Hmm. Not that she deserves it, mind. Oh, we've all taken advantage of Bob now and again. It's kind of what he's for. I suppose it depends on how far you want to go. <laughs> Meaning? Specifically? Well, she's not exactly whiter than white, is she? <laughs> I don't know, but go on. Well, I think there's been the odd indiscretion. Really? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Come on, spill. I suppose we're all a bit susceptible to a bit of totty in a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like this village. Especially when he's got an enormous stretch limousine. Hey, oh, uh, there he is. Hey, don't you go pulling any women tonight looking like that? There's only one I'm interested in. Terry, first of many. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Rodney. Not too many. Don't worry, half my stag night's usually in bed by half ten. <laughs> what about you? Do you fancy doing something wild? Only with my fiance. Hmm. Well, why don't you ask Vivian and your mum out for a drink? I'm sure Donna would come. Yeah, and while you're all out enjoying yourself, we'll be strangling each other. Well, I'll have a drink with you. I'll finish at eight. Louise, come and have a drink with Dawn. Last minute hen night. We'll get Diane out and all. Oh, what about the bar? Oh, Bob can manage. Yeah, seeing as he's the only one who's not going to his mate's stag night. Now, uh, Terry, get that down here. Oh. Don't worry, Dawn. Yeah, you better to do. Thanks, Trisha, but I've got loads of sorting out to do at home. Oh, we'll do it another time when you've got more time. <laughs> Go clubbing in Hotton. We'll get a minibus. <laughs> I'll have some of that one, is it? Great, you're on. <sighs> Glad I'm not going. You're not invited. Uh, are we the only ones meeting here? Well, most people are turning up at Malt Shovel for half seven. Uh, us three, Paddy, Marlon, Jack, uh, Chris and Ashley said they'd be there for about half nine. Eight of us. Two taxis back. But why the malt trouble? Don't worry, you're forgiven this once. A diplomatic compromise. Oh, why is move if you ask me?
did you know straight away that Marlon was the right bloke? Oh, no. I couldn't have done it like you, you know, dived straight in. No, I had a bit of a paddle round first. <laughs> but you know now? That he's the love of my life. Absolutely. But, you know, when you've been living together, I'm not sure that you really feel that married once you finally get round to it. It's like, well, what's the difference? Still, you don't have to worry about that, do you? <laughs> but you think it's crazy, then, just diving straight in? Well, as long as you love him, that's all that counts. Everything else you can just work on. I, I think I'll just nip off home and get a love painkiller. You ought to try some of this shiatsu, Alan. Get rid of your back pain without any chemicals. Oh, we are the wild bunch, aren't we? Uh, talking about anaesthetics, I think we've just about got time for another one. Uh, Bob's looking a bit down. It might not do any harm to have a try with the old olive branch. Yeah? Looks like we could do with a drink. I was thinking about it. I'm uh, going to get off after this one. You have a great time. Mm. Ah, I can't believe it. I've left my wallet over in the barn. Are you coming off to get your tablets, then? We'll be off, then, and uh, we'll phone the cab when we get back and get the show on the road. Hmm? Shift it now, love. I've got to touch you on the limit. I've got a spare room you can have for tonight. And I don't intend standing out here getting soaking wet arguing about it. Are you serious? When have you known me tell jokes? Now, do you want it or not? I'll get me gear. Well, don't be long. I'll leave the door on the line. I think I'm the one who's entitled to ask that. I'm not creeping around like a burglar. I forgot to pick something up. So have I, as it happens. My wallet. Huh. Well, there's no need to check it. Are you all right? I've been drinking. What are you up to, Steph? Um, oh! See what you nearly made me do. You could have smashed that. Yeah, you ought to be more careful. That looks as if it could be worth a few bob. Don't forget to lock up before you go. And you uh, know where I am if you need my professional advice. <laughs> I've had enough of dodgy antique dealers for one day. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm spending my stag night with two women. <laughs> Look. Even if Terry is still carrying a torch for me, I can hardly go and ruin his wedding, can I? All right. Uh, I know I may sound a little bit callous, but it would be for the best in the long run. She's going to regret it. Look, if anything had happened, it would be a different story. But it didn't. Anyway, Dawn's not bothered about Terry's past. As long as he's been straight with her since they met, that's all that matters. I suppose so. I, I just wish I could find something more current to pin on him. <sighs> Did you ever think about it, though, you know, you and Terry? I mean, you must come close to it. You shut up right now, Bob. Look, you'd only have to say. Look, I'm trying to save my daughter's life here. Yeah? Don't be ridiculous. What kind of person do you think I am? You should be ashamed of yourself for thinking things like that, Bob. I'm disgusted in you. What's going on? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm saying all this stuff. Any danger of a drink on my stag night? I cannot believe you would stoop this low, not you. You're all the same. I'm really sorry. It's doing me head in all this. Uh, Bob, uh, I was talking to the lads. Uh, I was thinking, you know... Terry, can I ask you something? Well, you're beating me too. I was just going to ask Bob if he fancied skiving off and having a few pints with me. Terry, if I asked you to come upstairs with me right now, you know what I'm talking about. Would you do it? I'm really sorry, Louise. Just a wind-up? No, I'm serious. Would you come up to bed with me right now? Well, I'm flattered. Uh, I mean, there was a time when I crawled the length of the M6 for you, but... Well, now? 
No. I'm getting married. Do you hear that? What's going on? Thank you. And thank you. You. Outside now. So when the um, towels are in the airing cover down by the side. I really appreciate this, Edna. I'm not just saying it. I mean, there's not a lot of people who put themselves out like this. Especially for someone like me. Oh, never mind that now. You just sit down in front of that fire. Oh, and I get up early, just so you know. You don't worry, Edna. I'll, I'll let you under your feet. Oh, no. That's Tootsie's job, isn't it? <laughs> just make sure that you don't tread on her. I didn't mean it, mate. I don't know. I, I, I'm just panicking. I'm sorry. At one time, I'd have said that you were my one real mate. I was even going to try and make things better between us, for God's sake. Do you think I'm proud of myself? Come on, you were besotted with Louise that five minutes back. Yeah, but that was before I met your Don. Look, I know you're struggling to get your head around. I don't us. believe you, though. That's the thing. I think you're going to hurt her. I think all this will. Don't you think it's gonna hurt her if she finds out what her old man had planned for my stag night? It wasn't a plan. It wasn't much of an idea, obviously. I have a good mind to tell her. <laughs> no, but you just said that you didn't want to hurt her. <sighs> right, well, you give me one good reason why I shouldn't smack you now. Because I'm nearly your father-in-law. Now, how sad is that? Right, well, if it makes you feel any better, I will never let Dawn down, not even with Louise. You've still got a thing for her, though, haven't you? Come on, why don't you just admit it, Terry? That's not what I just said! Lads, lads! Everything sorted? Yeah, I think so. Right, I'll go and uh, ring that cab, then, shall I? Yeah.